Good day and welcome to Mission Control Houston. I'm Kelly Humphreys and with me today is Mark Gulliams, who is the lead astronaut strength conditioning and rehabilitation trainer for astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Um, we're here today to talk because we're having a special day today. Today is the uh, International Space Station uh, crew briefing, uh, in particular for Mike Hopkins, so one of the next NASA astronauts is going to be flying up to the International Space Station. And Mike Hopkins has a special affinity for uh, training and fitness, and he's been working a lot with Mark to get ready for his uh, expedition aboard the International Space Station. Uh, and uh, that news conference is going to be at 1 o'clock today. There's also going to be a Google Hangout. Uh, that's going to involve a number of fitness experts, and we're going to have uh, this afternoon a uh, session where you can train like an astronaut here at the Johnson Space Center. A lot of social media folks and, or, and media are going to be here to see exactly how that works, and Mark's been involved in preparing for all that and getting Mike ready for his space station expedition. Tell us a little bit about what you do, Mark. Well, what we do is there's a group of us. There's four individual trainers, and we get assigned to a crew member about two years out from flight. So we'll start training with them about two years out from flight. We'll be with them through that whole training phase of pre-flight. We'll be with them in flight, which is six months. We'll do all the exercise prescriptions in flight as well uh, with some help from the exercise lab that actually helps us do some of the development of that. And then we're with them for about six to eight weeks post-flight once they return home to, get, to recondition them back to a 1G environment. So we're with them about two and a half to three years through their whole mission. Wow, and, and I, I bet Mike has been a bit of an extra challenge because he's such a fitness nut, huh? Actually, no, it makes it easier. It's uh, the fact that you don't have to beat him over the head to get him to exercise. He actually loves doing it. <laughs> okay, now, and he's former military, and he's in yeah. great shape, right? Y yes, he is. He's in very good shape. <laughs> so tell us what kind of exercise equipment we have aboard the International Space Station to help him maintain his good shape and his health for returning to wind gravity. Okay, well, we have, we have a cycle and we have a treadmill, so we use that for primary aerobic fitness, and then we have a resistive exercise device that allows us to do a multitude of exercises you would do in a gym here. It allows us, we can do squats and deadlifts, which are our, the main exercises that we do. You can do bench press and shoulder press and all, bent over rows. All, pretty much anything you think about you can do in a gym, we can almost do on Space Station. And that sounds easy, but it's not because you don't have gravity to help with the weightlifting, right? No, you don't. The resistive exercise device, for example, works off a vacuum system. And as you're exercising, it pulls a vacuum that creates the load. So we can get the loads to about 600 pounds. And when we tell people that, people look, oh, these guys are doing 600 pounds. Well, you think about it, you're removing their body weight out of the system as well. So we also have to calculate their body weight back into certain exercises to account for the loss of the 1G, or the, the G, 1G environment. Okay. And similarly, when they walk or run on the treadmill, uh, you're job there is to try and put force on their skeletal system yeah. to help uh, generate that uh, mm -hmm. bone uh, density uh, 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 regeneration that mm -hmm. happens every day here on earth, yeah. uh, but they would float away from a treadmill if they didn't have yeah. some special harnesses. So what they use is, is basically a harness that looks almost like similar to a backpack. It comes over the, the shoulders and attaches at the waist, and then we use a bungee system that comes up from the bottom that they clip into, and that's how we control their load that they're running at. So that's where we're going to get the impact loads, the proportion force, just the same thing you would just walking around and running down here. Okay, and we showed a picture of the treadmill oh. uh, system uh, that we uh, uh, were using, and help me with the acronym, it's Colbert, and it got that name because there was a contest yeah. for a module, yeah. but it's the Combined Operational yeah. Load-Bearing Treadmill. Resistive. Resistive treadmill, treadmill. Yeah. right. Yeah, so we call it just T2, for sure. Call it T2, <laughs> for sure, because it's a second treadmill. Yeah. We had an earlier one yeah. called the Treadmill Vibration Isolation, Isolation System, system. Yeah. Um, and that's since been replaced by a new system because uh, we loaned it over to the Russians, yes. right? Yes, and this one actually gives us a little bit more capability. It allows us to run at faster speeds and also allows us to do a lot more programming of individual programs into the system. Okay. So it, it helps a lot. So I know that astronauts on orbit try and get about two and a half hours of exercise in every day. Uh, and that's primarily to uh, keep from losing too much bone density and muscle density. Um, how much exercise do they get as they're getting ready to go on orbit? 
Um, it varies, again, per crew member. I mean, Mike probably exercises every single day. So I usually meet him here. We're here about 6 o'clock in the mornings, and we're training until 7.30 or so pretty much every morning, five days a week. What he does on the weekends kind of on his own. He, he, you know, he, he'll go out and run or he'll do some things like that. Okay, now not to get specific about anybody's yeah. particular exercise routine, but yeah. in general, do you follow the kind of things that other trainers do, where you alternate muscle groups and areas? Well, we we don't we don't look at it from that perspective. What we what we look at it at from our perspective is we we're training what we call movement patterns. So we look at how astronauts are going to be doing certain things in flight, like training for an EVA. And we're going to try to mimic those patterns within the weight room. And then there's certain things that we will do regardless of what we, what specific training we're trying to do. So we're going to squat, we're going to deadlift, but then we then take things like they're doing in the EVA, in the pool, training for EVAs, and we'll try to mimic those movements to prepare them to do better and be more functional in flight. I, I'm sure one area is the hands because yeah. the yeah. gloves, uh, you're working yeah. against pressure when you're doing a spacewalk, and, and I know there's a lot of work goes into beefing up your hands for yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's, it's basically forearm fatigue. So we'll do a lot of things where we're just carrying, which actually is an exercise called a farmer's walk, and you probably, if you've ever seen like the world's strongest man, these guys walk around with 400 pounds in their hand just carrying it, and it's a grip strength, forearm building. We do That would be an exercise that we would do. Not with 400 pounds, but we... Those are the types of things that we do, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about you. Uh, where are you from? Where did you go to school? How would you get oh, into this line of work? Um, well, I I grew up in Houston. I've been here my whole life, so I've been around the space program my whole life. My uncle actually worked here starting back in the very beginning. I mean, he was one of the first engineers here. Uh, he retired a few years ago. So I've been around it my whole life, and it never really dawned on me to even work at the space program. I've been involved in athletics most of my life. When I went to school, I kind of fell into physiology, exercise physiology, and uh, myself growing up, I, I always loved lifting and competing and doing that stuff, and it was just a natural fit for me. Uh, back in the early 90s, I kind of, when I started my graduate work, I uh, I did an internship here, and then I just kind of fell into it because we were just starting to do a lot of research with resistive training and how resistive training would affect space flight and that kind of stuff. So I just kind of fell into it, and I've been here ever since. I've been here about 20 years, and I've been the strength coach for about 16 years now. Great. And I understand there's more to this than just exercise. That we're working a lot with pairing exercise with nutrition to help mm -hmm. minimize the kind of problems that you can have if you live in microgravity for yeah. a long time. Yes, sir. And there's a there's another group within NASA, this the nutrition group, that works primarily with that. Uh, so we don't really deal with a lot of the nutrition stuff that goes on in flight. That's more in their, their kind of realm. <laughs> right, right. But, but it is interesting that you pair the, the nutrition with the exercise workouts to help do that. And some of that, uh, just as a sidelight, is it's, it's uh, not necessarily intuitive. Uh, you might think that more protein would help you get muscle density, but it may be the other way around. So yeah. We'll talk to a, a, a nutritionist about, about that, that later. Yeah. But, but, uh, but we are seeing some of that. We're seeing some increase. Uh, increase of protein intake in flight, but then that runs into other problems that there's other physiological problems that happen with too much protein from a zero-g environment. So you kind of, it's it's a very balanced system in how you got to deal with it. So. Okay. And then just a, a little bit more about what you do when they get back on the ground. How do you get them back to normal activities after they've been in orbit and microgravity well, for so long? Right now, it's pretty simple. They return once they land from a six-month mention, they land, they come home the next day. So we start uh, our reconditioning the very next day. And we just start out with very simple things from just walking and moving, just basic stuff that we take for granted. And it's not the sense that they can't do it, but because of the vestibular system and the effect of balance and coordination and the muscles have to learn to fire in the quick sequence to do certain things again. You would think walking, I mean, you watch somebody walk and they're walking, but the muscles aren't firing in the quick sequence that they need to be that normal, that you have in a normal. So it's just train, retraining the neurological system and the muscular system and the vestibular system 
to start handling those things again. Okay, and I understand you even have to build up some things like calluses because they're not walking a lot up there. Yeah. And they actually lose those all those things. Yeah. And and I I hear that it's kind of like uh, wa walking on uh, those those funny shoes that you use for shower yeah. shoes that have yeah. the little the, the little uh, yeah. plastic. Uh, yeah. And 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 you can actually have some feet pain when they come back just from. Um, just being in the 1G and how the bones and the ligaments within the foot act, because in in space, 22 hours out of the day, they're basically curled up, and it's almost like sometimes if you've ever gotten up in the morning after a good and long sleep, and you, the first step you take can be painful sometimes. It's kind of like that, so, you know, it happens fairly rarely, actually, so. Okay. Well, Mark uh, Williams, I want to Thank you again for being here today and, and wish you well on all of our activities with mm -hmm. Mike Hopkins and, and showing off how we train astronauts and, and how uh, even young folks out there can train like an astronaut. Uh, we'll have some demonstrations on that later today for folks that are visiting us here in Houston. Uh, and good luck with getting Mike ready for his flight and keeping him healthy while he's there. All right. Well, thanks for having me. Great. Thanks again for being here. Yes, sir.